How's it going? My name is Roshan. I am here with Myron. Uh, we are here to talk to you about the sex offender registry and the impact uh, the laws have on individuals once they get sucked into the system uh, behind a charge. So um, <clears throat> most of you that follow my YouTube, you already know who I am. You know, uh, you guys know about my case, uh, many of you. But today, <clears throat> it's not about me. Uh, we're going to dig a little bit into Myron, and we're going to see <clears throat> how uh, the sex offender registry has impacted his life, particularly behind a case he shouldn't have been on a registry for. So Myron, uh, can you give us a little brief introduction of who you are and how you got sucked into the system? My name is Myron Dennis. Um, I am 38 years old. Actually, I just turned 38 years old a month ago. And um, I have actually been on the sex offender registry list for 20 years now. This July, I make uh, like June, July. It's about J July, I believe, but it make 20 years that I have actually been a registered sex offender. Um, <laughs> my charge is uh, rape in the fourth, statutory rape, rape in the fourth, okay? which was consensual sex with a minor under the age of 18. Again, I was 18. Uh, my victim, I'm sorry, uh, my victim in the case, uh, she was 13 at the time. Um, how, how it happened basically is I came home from Job Corp around, I want to say the end of May. It was like May 25th or something. And, um, you know, I had I only moved lived to Delaware for uh, maybe in 1998. So this was 2001. Been in Job Corp for a year and a half. You know, I really didn't know anybody up there. And I moved back to Delaware, and I meet this 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 young lady. Six later, she told me she was 17, and you know, I thought she was 17 because she was hanging out till like 10 o'clock, driving cars, smoking cigarettes. You know coming to see me, you know, get in cars, driving to come see me. And she looked like she was 17. So um, I, you know, we started talking, we hit it off and everything, you know, I was 18 again. I had just turned 18 a few months before that. And next thing I know, we went over to a friend of mine's house and um, I said, hey, can my, uh, my chick use the, the, the bathroom? And she said, uh, they said, yeah. And I, I, I told her to come in. And the, the friend of mine's little sister used to have a crush on me. And she used to always smile when I come over there. But I tell man, when you turn 18, come holler at me. Well, this time she had an attitude. And so I was like, what you, what's wrong with you? And so she was like, oh, you won't date me, but you'll date somebody to go to my school. And I said, what you say? And because she said it under her breath and she kind of like walked by. I was like, what you say? And she was like, yeah, oh, what, you didn't know? I said, what do you mean? What, what, what are you talking about? And she was like, how old did she tell you? I said, she told me she was 17. The girl started laughing in my face. I was like, what do you, what do you mean? She said, Man, listen, I see her in the hall in my school every day, and I knew that girl was in middle school. Okay. And you so, want to know something funny? I don't mean to cut ahead. you off, but um, when I was younger, I remember uh -huh. all... Mm -hmm the females, well, mm -hmm. a lot of them that used to mm -hmm. like, would only date older guys. And, right, right, right. you know, it's like, if you were their age, they wouldn't mess with you. No. And no. what they would do, like, it was a thing for women to actually lie about their age. And yeah. you know, it's crazy that you saying this because it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, so you meet a young lady, you know, look mature, or mm -hmm. develop in a certain way. Right. Tell yes. you, you know, mm -hmm. he's 17 while you're 18. And mm -hmm. in all actuality, she's younger than what she said. Well, okay, hold on now. Because people say, well, you should be able to tell. And I'm like, okay, well, if she's hanging out till 10, 11 o'clock at night, what 13 year old know you know that can hang out till 10, 11 o'clock at night? You see what I'm saying? Like right. it's curfew type stuff because I'm I'm a fresh 18. So I'm talking about, I turned 18 March 3rd in, in Job Corp, in, uh, in Clearfield, Utah. I was in Job Corp, okay? So from March 3rd to, I think it was like May 25th or something. I mean, that's what, two, two months or so? A little over two months right there, two, three, almost three months? Mm -hmm. 
I, I mean, you go from 17, 18, you don't know. I mean, you just like, okay, I'm grown now. You really don't know all of the consequences that go along with it. Nobody ever talks to you about it. And you got to remember, this is back in 2000. So we're talking right. about AOL, CDs, dial up and everything. The big brick Nokia phone with the little right. light up antenna on that thing. Okay. So like, it wasn't like today where we had the Facebooks and the MySpaces and everything. Because MySpace wasn't even popping yet. Okay. So like, you didn't have all you had was a verbal, you know, so it's kind of like, okay, well, that's, that's right there. So when you're 17, you're 18, you can still do that. Cause, okay, y'all, she about to be 18 soon, you know? So, um, again, sorry. Uh, once I found out about that, you know, and, and, and the girl's aunt, she was like, hey, because um, I go by Memphis. And she was like, Memphis, calm down. Memphis, calm down. Just stay calm. Just stay calm. <laughs> Just take her home and drop off. So I took her home. I well, I get, got in the car. I asked. I was like, "Hey, how old are you?" She was like, "I'm 17." I hit the brakes. She was like, and she looked kind of scared. And I was like, "Hey, man, how old are you, man?" And I said, "This is serious, okay?" I said, "I'm 18." I said, "I'm 135 pounds, soaking wet, with a brick in my back pocket, okay?" And Delaware only had state prisons. They did not have any state jails. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. You got county jail. You got 20154, you know? So when you think prison as a young man, you think Big Bubba going to get you lifting weights and all that. Right. So that's what instantly hit my head. Like, oh, my God, like, this chick lied to me. They have to understand. They have to understand, you know? Like, and then when you drop off, you don't talk to her. Nothing goes. you like, okay, everything, you clean and clear. And then maybe like a month and a half later, her friend gets in contact, like comes up to my job and like, listen, I know you're upset you don't want to talk to her, but you need to hear this. And she told me the young lady was pregnant. And so like, you know, I was like, oh man, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, so we went, got the pregnancy test. She, you know, you peed on the stick. She was, it's it, all three tests. <laughs> I think I went and I got to buy, uh, buy two, get one free. At the time for Walmart, and stuff. <laughs> all three tests came up positive, and I'm talking about it was like a huge slap in the face. I was like, "Oh my God!" Right? I was like, "God, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do?" And I was just like, "Okay, all right." So we we talked or whatever like that, and um, she was like, "You know, I'm not I'm not gonna turn you in. You know, I'm a, you know, if anything ever happens, I'll just mess up and tell them, you know, what happened, you know." that I lied, you know, you know, and like, it's not like you did anything to me that I didn't want to do. So it's like, all right, cool. And I was still going to work and everything every day, you know? And um, then one day I get a call from a police officer. I was at her house. Her, her mom was like, you know, running some pizza joint down the street or whatever. So she was like, hey, Memphis, you know, you need to go to the house and, you know, and check on her. I don't want to put a name on black uh, out yet, you know, but um and and um so I said, okay, cool. I would get off work and I would go over there because now I'm like, okay, she's young, she I, I know how old she is. So I'm like, so now I'm not even thinking about her in this aspect of the 17 year old I met. I'm like, oh man, like I'm about to be a father. I'm you got a baby on the I'm, way. Yeah, I'm I'm 18, like I need to work two jobs, you know, so I can stack up, you know, diapers and cash and you know, I, you know, I'm trying to like, you know, be a quote unquote man, all right, and handle right. like, but I'm a child, dude. Like, let's 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 face it, let's realize it. when you're 18, especially when you come fresh, uh, fresh from 17, like, you know, you still doing childish stuff, you know. Absolutely. So, um, um, the, the the cop he talked he talked to me, asked me where I was, and I told him, and he was like, uh, does a mom know that you're over here? I was like, yeah. Gave him the number, called her mom. Confirmed it, called me back. Uh, it was like, I just want to talk. You're not in trouble. I started talking to him, you know, never read my rights or anything like that. Then uh, he was like, all right. Then like a few days later, he called me back. He's like, hey, yeah, we just need you to come down to the station. We need to just ask you a couple more questions. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, because what she stayed at was right down the street. for like right around the corner from, from, all, that, from all that, you know, right in Delaware. Because it was, Delaware was small. I was from Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee was huge, you know. Dover, Delaware is like, <laughs> so um, I go down there and I mean, they was real cool. Never got put in handcuffs. Next thing I know, 
I'm being fingerprinted. I'm being, uh, they took a couple pictures of me. Then they released me. I got to so, go. Let me ask you this. Uh -huh. who, who was pressing charges? Like, was this the mom or a father or like, did the uh, state I, figure out I, something? Uh, um, so basically what happened was because like, it, you know how, you know, split custody, mom and dad. Mom had custody in Delaware. Dad stayed in, in Jersey. He was a workaholic type dude. Never met the guy, never saw the guy, anything like that, right? And I guess that dad got wind that, that, that his daughter was pregnant, right? So he started calling and asked why they wouldn't tell him nothing, right? So then he got like, I, and we're not sure, but Lil Birdie said somewhere, uh, he's 18 and he's black. And then that's when I guess he went and called in like to the, to the state police or whatever like that. So uh, um, 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 it was real crazy because at first they, they didn't say nothing. We was she black? No, Vanessa's white. Okay, white. so white. a so, little white but, girl. Yeah. And Messing with like, older black males. Yeah. And the father got wind that mom don't was, even live in the same city as y'all. Same state, don't even live in the same state. And he pretty much got the state to come and get your case. Well, because okay. his daughter wanted to be with you? Well, they, they, so at first they was cool, right? They started pressuring them at first, right? They started really pressuring them because, you know, she was having to go because she was, again, she was only 13, you know? So they, you know, she was having uh, uh, like CPS talk to her. And so basically what happened is everything was cool at first. I wasn't going to get charged or nothing. They weren't trying to turn me in until I got the call one day that, you know, Mama D and Vanessa was crying. They both was crying. They were bawling, crying. I'm like, I'm on my way. What's up? Next thing I know, they tell me that they they got, we got a decision to make because CPS just threatened to take uh, Vanessa, take the baby away from Vanessa and uh, when the baby is born and then take Vanessa away from her mom when, uh, 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 when all this is wrapped up. So they was like, if they don't, if you don't tell who the father is. And so they say, because you know, this is what this is the story, but y'all saying no, and y'all not telling who the father is. We hadn't seen the father at none of the appointments or nothing like that, because I wouldn't go. You, you see what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to like, you know, I, I I would like go like and sit in the car or something like that, but I would never go in. And then and, and um next thing you know, so I'm I'm like, man, damn. So this is the um, state then. This is yeah. doing this. Yeah, yeah. So so when I got I got I got this 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 chick, you know, that's supposed to be pregnant with my kid that's that's crying and everything like that, you know. And I'm I'm you know, her mom is like, you know, red faced, tears bawling. And and then, you know, so it's like, okay, let them get taken away from 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 both parents and be in the foster care system or me turn myself in and maybe get some like hopefully I, I can tell my story and get some probation or something like that, you know. Never, never in my life did I ever think about or know about a sex offender registry list. Okay, mm. never in my life did I ever hear about a sex offender or anything like that. Right. So then that's when I was like, all right. And then that's when the cop called me and, and we started talking. <clears throat> and then that's when, like again, never got put in handcuffs. Just went down there. Never had to bond out or anything like that. Right. So uh, when I started going through the court case and stuff like that, right. Um, my lawyer was this old lady and I would ask her questions about like, you know, the case and everything. Cause when I, were, when I read it, that's when I found out they were trying to charge me as a sex offender. And she would say, she didn't know this was her first sex offense case. So I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do then? And then, you know, 18 year old trying to read a law book. And, you know, I was just like, all right, so, Again, I just kept working, kept working. I was worried about the baby. I was worried about her. And then, like, as time went on, like, the due date got pushed back and everything like that. Due date kept getting pushed back. Next thing you know, she has the baby. Baby comes out. It is not mine. Okay. The Hold baby on. Wait a minute. I'm yeah. sorry. Give me a second. No. Yeah. <laughs> wait. Didn't so, I tell you want to talk to me? <laughs> hold on. Wait. So you got... Mm -hmm. 
a underage female that mm -hmm. looks older that mm -hmm. tell you she's older mm -hmm. because she wants to mess with older guys, a little white mm -hmm. girl that want to mm -hmm. date older black guys, mm -hmm. uh, get with you. Mm -hmm. You know, you think she's older. You find out she's younger. But then when you find out she's younger, you also find out she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then you trying to figure out how to take care of her and this baby that you believe is yours. Mm -hmm. The state uh, picks up the case, you know, because mm -hmm. CPS is looking at this underage girl that's pregnant by mm -hmm. somebody that they don't know who the father is. And since she's young, they want to know who the father is, but she don't mm -hmm. want to say your name because she don't mm -hmm. want to get you in trouble, but they threaten right. to take the baby and take her mm -hmm. from her mama. Mm -hmm. So you go into court because mm -hmm. of this girl pursuing you that's underage, that lied, that got pregnant. And then when the baby actually get here, you find out it wasn't yours? All white are so uh, green, green eyes with red hair. Oh, interesting. Is he on a registry too? No, he was only 17. So, oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah. So, because he's only 17. So, I kept saying, uh, and, and like my, it, even in my case, she admitted to, you can see, you can, if you really like no law and no like jargon in your case, because I'm not going to lie, it has made my life very difficult. Okay. Like when I say very difficult, I have had to read and fight my my myself and so fight for myself in court with a public defender, like giving the public defender paperwork, telling them, hey man, stand up and, and use what I told you to do. This is you crazy. know. Yeah. So, so how long did they give you for the registry? How long do you have to register? Oh, um, okay. I'm a tier one when it was all said and done. Um, I didn't have to register in Delaware. Because my I was so low tier, I was tier one. Um, I got what is it? I think a year and a half probation or something like that. Yeah, I got like a year and a half, maybe two years probation, something like that. Never did any like jail time for no prison time or nothing like that, you know. Um, but it was like I guess they said that like in like ten or fifteen years I could go to the I could go and you know and get off like get off the registry or whatever like that. And so, but it's so, twenty. But it's been twenty. Okay. So, but hey, okay, my case is all messed up, right? <clears throat> because of the situation at hand, because I was so mentally like messed up that you know, like I didn't. I'm a. I, I, at this point in time, I'm thinking I'm about to go to prison about a baby that's not even mine. Like, like, like that. It that was rough. Okay. When I sit there and say that was rough, like oh, they I didn't imagine. I mean, you're 18 years old. I mean, just to think about prison at the age of 18 when you ain't never been locked up before, it could be scary. Yeah. So, um, so boom, I'm like, ooh. So, so, um, um, but I'm already. I didn't already like, you know, like, like stuck my foot in my mouth. You know, I don't have no, no, nobody to like, you know, tell me what to say and what not to say. You know, I'm not. I hadn't been in trouble enough to know the, the the legal system and stuff, you know, because again, uh, I have to read law books and stuff, you know, so I can know what they can't do to me. At the know, age of 18, can, you know. trying to read yeah. law books. It's well, like listen. me reading French when I never uh, spoke French in my life. <laughs> well, trying listen, to figure it well, out. Oh man, no, but you, listen, when they start talking about linebacker numbers, you'll go get you a dictionary, a thesaurus, and boy, you'll be in there with a Mac with, with somebody else. Hey, oh man, let me see your magnifying glasses while you see. Okay. <laughs> you know, so anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, well, okay. So, Brother Myron, I'm, I'm still trying mm -hmm. to figure out mm -hmm. if you were supposed to register for 10, 15 years mm -hmm. and you're going on 20 years, like, mm -hmm. why hasn't the state removed you yet? Okay, one, you have to uh, apply to be removed. Okay, right. You really, you have, you have, um, you have to. It's like stipulations. Everything that we I do has stipulations. My whole life is nothing but stipulations. I am not on probation. I'm not on anybody. Uh, nothing. I'm clean. I'm free. Uh, when I, oops, yeah, my bad, y'all. Uh, when I signed the paperwork, right? 
it uh uh um when I signed the paperwork because again it was a year and a half probation I was just happy I wasn't going to prison I didn't read the paperwork okay right and like my my pub defender she wasn't saying hey you need to read this or trying to guide me to read this over you know so it was it was I was just signing just so I can get out of court you know and uh because my again when I would go in there my heart would race and everything you know so I was just trying to really get out of there because I was scared, you know, and they telling me, oh, it's not going to be bad. You, you don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. You know, you want you want to do probation. You won't have, you know, nothing to worry about, you know. So uh, they told me I wouldn't have to register. So uh, I get off and then I moved down to Florida in mm -hmm. 2006. And again, I didn't read the stipulations, did the registry stipulations and Moved down to Florida and I meet this chick and uh, she ends up turning turning me in. She turns me in. Yeah, I got it on definitely. <clears throat> and she say, um, "What did she say?" Oh, I know a sex offender, uh, a registered sex offender that's uh, uh, that's down here in Florida. And uh, he, uh, she told him where I worked at and where I lived at, right? And she just told him that I just didn't want to register. And uh, I was running and I didn't want to be on the registry list. And I was like, how am I running that I'm getting mail here? I'm working, you know, I'm, 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 I'm hanging out. I've been in Florida for the first time, you know? And uh, cause I moved down here with uh, uh, Vanessa's sister. So her, I moved down here with her older sister, but we were cool. Who was and Vanessa? So Vanessa is the victim, right? Ah. Yeah, Vanessa is the victim. And uh, um, so, like the everybody, everybody that was around knew that the whole situation was just messed up and foul, right? It was just, it was just a they they knew I got screwed royally, right? But again, when it when you that young, you know, I was trying to like dust it off. I, I I was such a positive person, you know. I thought I had my whole life ahead of me. I could, you know, I could still go do this. Nope, can't do nothing. Yep, can't the registry it. can um destroy people's oh. lives that's for certain so well let me ask you this when you mm -hmm. moved to florida mm -hmm. how did that affect the registry like how long do florida have you on the registry oh my god so everything everything is trumped up in florida because i did not and and god so basically it's like this because i did not register when i moved down here to the state of florida and that's part of my, the thing, the, the stuff that I signed when I was 18, like 18, 19, 2001, whatever like that, right? Um, it says that when you move to another state, you have a certain amount of hours to like, you know, inform that other state. And so apparently I didn't do that, you know, because I didn't read it. That's my, uh, ignorance of the law is not a defense, okay? That's because they, they have, you know, law books or whatever. So I know that now, back then I didn't. Um, I don't remember classes, criminal law classes in, in, in school back in the day. Them teaching us what you're supposed to do and not to do it, what to read, all that type of right. stuff, right? So um, basically, I got a failure to register charge, okay, in the state of Florida, which in, what was that, 2007? Yeah, 2007, I got a failure to register charge, all right? So because, and my charge was a third degree felony in the state of Delaware, right? But because of Florida laws, and if I would have caught a third, if I would have caught my charge in the state of Florida, it would have been a listed as a second degree felony, that that makes the, the failure to register as a third degree felony. So I have two third degree felonies on my register, I mean, on my record. So yeah, I'm the only person you know that's got Two felonies on their record, and one is for the other one. I got two third degree uh, felonies for uh, a third degree felony. But how long do you have to register in Florida? I'm still. I got. I just registered uh, last month. But how long? A lifetime. Uh, it, Twenty five it, years. It, when is I it? Go, if I uh, 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 we're trying to uh, uh, trying to fill out the paperwork and everything and, and get all this stuff submitted to the state of Delaware. So, because I have to go through Delaware first, because my Del my charges are originally in Delaware. So then I had we I, I have for the past probably I want to say eight months now I have like really been trying to like get this off my record. Okay, I've been trying to get this so off my back. When and, you, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, mm -hmm. but when you catch a case, right? Mm -hmm. If you have X amount of years in one state, when you go to another state. 
you still on that registry, but the amount of years is different from that state. And the state that Trump will be the state that you live in. So yep. when you moved to Florida and when you actually registered, did they tell you how long you had to register? Nope. Florida, uh, Florida, talk, Florida talk used to talk crazy to me, okay? Florida used to talk so crazy to me. I get treated like, uh, in, in Florida, I have I have less rights than a dog in, in the state of Florida. I can imagine. So No, I, no, I, no, no, no. I can prove it. I can oh, prove it. I, oh, I can imagine. But that's what we want to know. We want to know how has the, the registry impacted you. Oh, okay. So, like, uh, when it comes to, for example, we're going to start with your living situations. How has the registry impacted your living situations? Oh, man. I can't, like, uh, trying to get, I can't live in apartments. Um, it depends on what county you live in. Uh, depends on how often the police come and, and check your home address. Um, it depends. Uh, it depends. Like, so I live in, in Sarasota County, okay? And the reason why I live in Sarasota County is because in Manatee County, just a few miles over, okay, they, no matter what tier sex offender you are, they pass flyers out with your, with, with your picture and your charges on it, right? So I have been living in a place and then they come and pass flyers out. And these people that I was just kicking and talking to the next, yesterday, they looking at me with hate my, with in hate in their eyes, you know? They my pass out getting, flyers. Yeah, because yeah, they passing out flyers and then, you know, with my picture on it, because I don't care how you say it, rape in the fourth don't don't sound good at all. OK. Rape anything don't sound anything good, don't know? sound good. And, and you they know? demonize people, you know, and they don't nobody take a moment to think, how did this happen? Nobody take a moment to think that somebody could have got on the registry because somebody's daughter that was underage went out to lie to somebody else over age to so they can do what they wanted to do which was be grown before they was grown nobody think you know that somebody is on the registry because of an angry parent or because they were surfing the internet and somebody was on an adult social media site mm -hmm. and they had and they was mm -hmm. underage on this adult social media mm -hmm. site but yet they put on a profile that they was 20 <laughs> right nobody, right nobody right think about these things only well, thing not, this is a charge, which is sad. Mm -hmm. And so again, I never talked about my my charge. Like right? <clears throat> I never talked about my charge. All right, never because it's so it, it makes your life so difficult. Like people look at you and and and, and uh, they just they look at you like you touch kids or something like that. You know, and, well, hey, and to, to, to you twenty years thought, for a white lie. Have you ever thought that you know, like if you were to tell people before they find out? that it may be better or do you you don't think that you know like that's is is that's a okay first of all you gotta remember the world we live in today okay we you got this council culture okay like i've had to live through the whole me too thing okay right i've had to live through like so much stuff and you know um i had i've i've, I've had to like be quiet on subjects you know and then, and people, when they try to talk to me about it, I'm like, no, I don't want to talk about that because I can, I have a different feeling and I can tell you why. Like I do, I have compassion for people that, for stuff that really happens because it is people that is out there just, just doing some messed up stuff they shouldn't be doing. Okay. Right. But then when you have a person like me that, uh, for, for, uh, if I had, if, if for me, if I hadn't had the drive and the determination and the dedication to be a better person, to want more out of life, I would be in a dump. You know, I've had police officers tell me like when I say, well, what am I supposed to do? They tell you, go, go get you a tent and go live in the woods with the rest of the sex offenders. That's crazy. You know? Like, like, like when, when, when Hurricane Irma came through a few years ago, um, I had to play it off. My wife and my son, they were nervous. Everybody was leaving Florida and they, and they were talking about how bad it was. And they were so nervous and they just kept wanting me to leave and they couldn't figure out why I was leaving. They thought I was trying to be a hard behind, right? But um, the reason why we didn't leave is because um, I cannot go to a a, shel a shelter, okay, That's during bad. a natural disaster. Okay, I, my, my only two choices are I have to sit at home and brave out the storm or go and turn myself into the county jail. Right, so, this is a death okay. trap. Okay, but, but your dog, you can go take your dog to a home shelter. Go. That's, I had, so I had a little trigger like a couple of weeks ago 
Um, it was about, about a month ago because, you know, when Texas, you know, shout out to Texas, you know, I hope everything's doing good over there, whatever, right? But when they when they was having like that real bad storms or whatever, right? I go in from my from you know at work to go grab some coffee and some water, and the news is on. I look over and they're talking about you know Texas storm and that they're at the shelter and they interview this lady and she has her two dogs with her at the shelter and that instantly like that that just triggered me and it just like it 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 it, it messed me up because again like I had to put my I had to like 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 think about it and internalize that because I didn't tell my wife until way after and right. her mouth was dropped because she didn't even know. And I so- think You and, and, some and, people don't understand. And so uh, like, I just told my father, uh, I just <clears> told my dad <throat> last night, you know, and he's like, well, oh my God. Like, he's like, I don't understand how, how, how you, 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 you dealt with this. And I said, because you don't tell people, you know, it's, 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 I moved to Sarasota County because yes, I pay a little bit more in, in rent and everything, and it's so difficult to find a place. But um, I found out that because they used to pass out flyers in a similar situation happened to a guy about my age or whatever, I mean, about my age when it happened, he, um, 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 high school thing or whatever like that, he got put on a sex offender registry and I guess he ended up hanging himself because like they passed out flyers in the neighborhood. So I get, they took that stipulation off for people, you know, with mine. Okay, right. So, um, um, like when I sit there and say it's it's so difficult, like um, I. So let me tell you what I'm thinking about, right? As I'm sitting mm -hmm. here listening to you, you know, mm -hmm. talk about the young man who caught a case similar to yours, hung himself, or the went the storm in Florida where everybody evacuating, but yet. You sitting here, you know, everybody think you've been a hard guy, but yet what it is, you're trying to protect yourself, but yet you putting yourself in dangerous way dangerous in order to protect yourself from the people because this is death. And then this is like a living death. So they both death. It's just one, you no longer breathing. And the other one, you're dead, but yet you still alive. But what I hear is mental health problems, right? Like the things oh, yeah. that we have to deal with and the things that impact us in certain ways to where, mm. you know, a lot of people will never understand because everybody don't get the opportunity and a chance to deal with something that you're dealing with. You know, it's like <clears throat> you sitting here in the middle of a hurricane because you're afraid to be incarcerated. And mm, yeah. it's like, just that's that's sad you know it and, and it's hurtful to me you know it's like i give you an everyday scenario dude i can give you everyday uh, scenarios right um i pick my friends about you know like you know if they have like little boys or little girls or whatever like that you know and people are like what and i've never said anything until just recently and people say what I noticed that you do only like hang out with people who got little boys. And then like, you know, I'm still kind of cautious of them. And then um, um, like my boss, I worked for this one guy and he had a daughter, she was real cool. And and I was like, dude, you never noticed that anytime she comes in the room, I always leave out the room. I'm always sitting on the other side. I'm like, I'm like, uh, like uh, the only little girl uh, is my niece, <laughs> but she's seven. And like I tried for the longest to avoid her, and she like always just came mess with me. And so like I'm like, okay, who? Why am I supposed to like push this little girl away and hurt this little girl feelings? You know, because of, of my own thing. So I mean, that's that's my home girl right there. You know, she always coming ride. You know, ride with me. You know, but um, but it, um, another everyday situation. I don't like to be too close to women, like especially like at nighttime or whatever like that. So I was with my wife. It was this lady. It was this lady in front of me in the store and, you know, it was just her and I in the store. And then when she walked, like, you know, she paid for stuff, she left, but I, uh, uh, she kind of was like standing to the side, kind of like, like this, or whatever. And I kind of like saw that she was kind of looking over her shoulder. So I kind of like, you know, reached back to go, like I stepped back some more to like grab some chips or whatever, just so I can create an extra distance so I can make her feel safe and feel comfortable, you know? Cause I don't, you know, I didn't, I, I'm just there, you know, trying to get what I need to get. I so, get. Uh, 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 so then, you know, she leaves and, and, you know, I, 
I kind of stayed to the right or whatever like that. You got to go out to the left and everything, you know. So then I paid for my stuff, go, get back in the car. And she just so happened to be going, pulling out and at the same time and going the same way that I was going. And I was with my wife. I had my wife in the car. And so uh, my wife was like, why are you going so slow? And I was like, and I couldn't tell her. <laughs> because like when we pulled out, it was kind of like we both backed out. And then we made a left. And then we went to the little driveway. She made it right. And I made it right. And then it gets kind of dark right there, you know, because there's trees and stuff right there, you know. And then down at the so other side. even with your wife, you still it, feel uncomfortable around other women. I, I get it. I, I really do. How about it's so easy point? for somebody to sit there and say, hey, he did this. And then they slapped the handcuffs on me first. And, and then I got to go and fight my, I got to go and, and, and write paper to the law library and go read the law so I can go I fight my way out of, out of some bull crap. Yeah, you're right. How about employment? So, How has the registry impacted employment for you? Okay. Um, for me, <laughs> I put willing to discuss. All right. Uh, when they ask if you have been convicted of a felony, uh, just so it gives me some opportunity to get my foot in the door, you know, because I'm a talker. Uh, I'm a I'm a motorcycle technician. Um, I have fought hard to be a motorcycle technician. Um, oh man, that that whole story in itself. How I went to school with a trip. But um, yeah. Like, like for me, I've had to try to like find jobs. That's why I like went the auto the automotive way because they're less likely to do background checks if you're working on the cars or whatever like that. They just want somebody to spend rent, you know. Uh, but you're not getting a good job with benefits, you know. Uh, when when I can't go and I can't go and do Lyft, I can't go do Uber, you know, because of my background, you know. Um, I can't take my son to the YMCA, you know, the, the little splash park, you know, because you know. They run it. They they spike the ID. Um, so again, I mean, it's just it's a lot of stuff, you know. Well, you know, um, like because of time, we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping up. But this was a a great conversation. I mean, um, I mean, just listening to your experiences, um, I really wish more people understood you know, like the problems the registry bring, you know, and maybe, you know, if more people actually understood the problems the registry brought instead of create safe communities, they would make mm -hmm. some changes to the registry so we could actually have safe communities. But um, like, oh. let me ask you this. Oh, go mm -hmm. ahead. <clears throat> I, you know, I go and I start my, um, in the morning time, when I go and I start my truck up, or I go start my bike up, right? Um, it's this little boy that was walking to school, right? And because I live at the corner of a four way stop. And I, I always crack the blinds on my window. So when I start my vehicle up, I can kind of like look through my, you know, just keep an eye on my vehicle, right? So I know it's a little boy. He walks the corner, he walks around the corner and down the street to school. If I'm not out there, but if I'm ever out there and I'm starting my vehicle, he always runs right there, right? And so right. I never, and, and but I'm not mad at the little boy. I'm not upset with the little boy because he only doing what his people told him to do. Because you know, because I'm on the sex offender registry, so so you know you can that that you can look on the you know you can look in your neighborhood and see where everybody at. So and I live in the Spanish community, you know. So so like you know, I'm sure they all talk and they know who I am, you know. So, I mean, it, it is, that's, 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 that, that one right there took a lot to, to, to deal with right there, you know, mm. because I'm like, and, because I thought I was tripping at first. I thought I was literally tripping at first. And so what I would do is, is like, you know, I looked at my phone to see what time it was. And then like for like a week straight. So Monday I went out there right at the same time. And as soon as he saw me. He, he took out in the full sprint around or uh, down the sidewalk around the corner until he hit the little light pole down there. And then I'm like, okay. So uh, uh, when, I'm sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I I, I didn't go out there. I, I waited until after he passed and he walked the whole time. Friday, I went out there as soon as he saw, boom. He, <laughs> and so I was like, yep, all right. So I'm not tripping. And so, and then I just kind of like shrugged my shoulder and went to work. <laughs> That's crazy. So go ahead, brother. 
No, I was going to ask you, uh, <clears throat> if you could change uh, anything about the registry, what would it be? Um, I would definitely say that they need to uh, separate it. You, you definitely got to separate it. You need to have common sense. I mean, you need to have some type of legislator, some type of like a uh, group of government, some type of like group of people to uh, sit down and think about today's stuff, today's laws, today's things, today's this, today's that. Because, um, I mean, you got to think about it. I'm 38 years old. I grew up when we taking road trips, you know, you got to stop. If you got to use the bathroom, you better stop and go, you just go on the side of the road. You go today and you do that, you know, and, and you're a sex offender. You see what I'm saying? That's 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 a little lascivious, you know. Um, it's all kinds of stuff, and then you, you know you're 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 barred for life. You're, you're scarred for life, you know. And, and and some people they can't take it. They I, I know somebody that their dad got got one of those like those um those computer thing charges. Wrote a note, <clears throat> gone. <clears throat> and so I reached out to her because I mean I, like I I have gone through it for so long, you know that. I was trying to like, you know, like, you know, let her know about my experiences so she could have some type of comfort, you know, you know. And and then like from then on at that point, that's when I really started like, you know, telling people like and people just mouth just dropped. Because um actually one guy, I got threat, I got threatened. I got threatened and I had had enough. Uh guy, he was talking crap about motor about my career. And I was like, dude, this is my career. And this is my career we're talking about. And y'all are taking this man's side. You know, it's not a job, it's my career. And he like direct messaged me and said, hey, you do know we know about your charge, right? So I said, so what does God do with anything? I'm just saying, man, you should just go and leave us alone and he gonna tell everybody about your charge. So you about to go and try to go and like put me on blast because of something you read online that you as a man, have never not, I've known you for a few years now, you have never not once come and talked to me and we considered friends. You hadn't asked me what happened in that situation, but we get into a verbal altercation as adults, okay? And you come at me and tell me, hey, be quiet or we gonna tell everybody that you're a registered sex offender, really? Okay, so <laughs> don't nobody know my story better than me. And I went and told everybody. And some people they they don't like me for it. So what? I mean, I mean, hey, whatever, dude. Hey, yeah. <laughs> so, well, uh, Myron, it was great mm -hmm. talking to you today. Um, before we close, I do want to say, uh, accepting the a plea deal uh, don't necessarily mean you agree with it. You know, we sign plea deals for all sorts of reasons, uh, looking for a lenient sentence, uh, thinking it's the only way out or thinking it's the safest way out. And mm -hmm. a criminal record do not equal guilt. Um, so when it comes to the laws, criminal history, records, I wish it really didn't play a part in how we live, you know, or have such an impact to where it play with our mental stability, you know, mm -hmm. or even play with how people look at us when they don't even know us, mm -hmm. but it does. And the only way to change it, we got to get people that's unimpacted, unaffected uh, mm -hmm. and to advocate with us on law change and we got to advocate mm -hmm. ourselves. But, mm -hmm. um, Let's go ahead and wrap up. I thank you all for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Roshan's Journey YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button. And Myron, thank you for the chat. You know, and we'll talk on another, uh, maybe another time. I might have to bring you back. You got a lot to say. Brother, don't worry about it. You'll see me soon because I got to go. I'm going to have to go and fight the Supreme Court myself. I can't get nobody to help me out up there. So I just said, I'm going to go read the law, go in there, put on me a little snazzy suit and tie, and let's go, let's go and do some legal jargon in the courthouse so we can change. I'm not just trying to help me. I'm trying to help a lot of people out, you know? So we're going to make some change, brother. So yeah, that's what right. it's about. You know, it's yes, like sir. using yes, experiences, sir. our life experiences to help people that come behind mm -hmm. us so they don't have to experience what we experience yes, from a mishap. Yes, sir. So, 
Yes, sir. But, yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yeah. But again, thank you all for watching. Click that subscribe button. Mm -hmm. I will see you all on the next show. Yes, sir.